Hey folks, welcome to another RPG update. No face in this video from me, it's Sam, by the way, in case you can't tell the difference between Sam and Ben, some people can't. But the uh, reason there is no video is because it's very dark at the moment when I'm recording and I don't want to subject you to terrible lighting conditions. So what we're going to be showing you today is a damage text system. So let me go and show you if I go up to this archer dude here, there's only one of him, and I hit him, you can see that fading text above his head, and you saw I just did a critical hit, it was double the damage, and you can see the hits that he's doing to me as well. It's very crude at the moment, we can improve this a lot, but that's one thing I'm going to show you. The other thing I want to show you, if I unmaximize this, and give myself a little bit more health, oh, there you go, give myself some more health. Um, oops, I killed the archer. Let's uh, try and do this again. But what I wanted to also show you is that this player now has, over in his inspector, or her inspector, they have got some stats. And these stats affect the attributes, as you can see. So it gives you a damage bonus to increase your strength, increases your critical hit bonus to increase your strength, your dexterity increases your chance to a critical hit, so on. So that's the kind of stuff you really expect to see in an RPG. And also into the placeholder inventory that we've got here that Ben put together uh, quite a few uh, months ago, we have got these modifiers, and as you can see, these modifiers are basically going to be the modifiers that you get on items in an RPG. So let's see how that works. If I go ahead and hit play, and I'm going to just reload using some really janky UI down here to a state where the archers were still alive. And I'm going to go to the player and I'm going to go and I can go and increase, for example, his critical hit bonus. At the moment it's at 50. Let's make that 150 and increase his chance to 50%. So you'll see what's going on here. If I go and attack one of these characters, make sure I've got enough health. And you can see I'm doing 18, 18, then 57.6. So it's definitely a critical hit. You can tell the difference. And let me just crank that down to... Uh, I don't know, to about 20% critical hit. Then you'll see that it is indeed doing much smaller critical hits than it was just doing. And the critical chance and all that sort of stuff. So you can see here there's a drop down, it's an enum. You can choose what attribute you want this to affect. The moment it can't affect the hit speed anymore. I've removed that, but I haven't removed the option. You can add armor, you can add an armor bonus. The difference is the armor bonus adds a percentage bonus over the armor, the, which actually just adds armor points. So you can add armor points, you can add something that just percentage increases all your armor. So that's the general idea. I think I've covered most of it. And obviously increasing your stats will also increase the damage bonus and so on and so forth as per these effects on the attributes. So I've called them stats and attributes to identify the difference between them. There's no UI yet, but that is the start. So first of all, let me have a look at that damage tech system text system because that's quite interesting. So what's going on here, and by the way, at the moment I'm using Visual Studio Code, just testing it out, seeing how it works in the RPG. I know a lot of you like dark themes, so I'm also trying out a dark theme. I'm used to using light themes, but if you folks prefer dark themes on the videos like this one, please give me a thumbs up in the YouTube video and also go and say down in the comments whether you liked it. I think I'll leave a comment there saying thumbs up for dark themes, thumbs up for light themes, and we'll see who leaves the most thumbs up on which comment. Okay, so this here is our health system. Our health system has a take damage method, and when the damage is taken, we do some stuff to calculate, this is new, calculating the damage after the armor. We just subtract the total defense attribute from the armor and it creates that, that's fine. But also we do this thing here, which is the damage text spawner create, and it gives you the, the amount to display and the position to display it at. So previously, the way this has been done, the kind of on-screen UI, has been to put some UI in the world and turn to face it towards the player. What I'm doing here is a little bit different. I am spawning the text inside a canvas, and then I am positioning it to go to the right place. Let's, let me show you what I mean. So what we've got here is a canvas prefab, which in the world looks like this. It is just a canvas, and on it, it has this damage text spawner. That's what we're calling onto here. 
we've got this damage tech spawner and it's calling create on there. So if we go and have a look at our damage tech spawner, this is what it looks like. It's just got this create method. It instantiates the prefab of this other prefab, the damage text itself. It sets its uh, parent to the damage tech spawner and it, what's this bit doing? Oh yeah, that is getting hold of the damage text component and calling activate on it with a location that is offset by some amount. So you can see here it's offset by two meters. So it's two meters above the character. Okay, so we need to have a look at this damage text prefab basically, don't we? That's interesting. And using Unity's new prefabbing system, I can very handily look at the prefab directly, which is super cool. So here's the prefab. And what's interesting about it is that it's actually got animation on it. So if I go onto the text, you can see that the animation does this, kind of fades it up and out. And that is useful because we do want it to fade like that. And so what we've got also on this damage text is a damage text script, which has a link to its text element. And the damage text script, if I go ahead and open it up, it's fairly straightforward. It converts the position in the world into a screen space position via the main camera. So it says, what's this camera pointing at? Let's convert that 3D position into a 2D position. And so it places it in 2D on the canvas. And then it sets its string, which is doing it via Text Mesh Pro. So that's cool. And what we need to then do is destroy it after it's finished for that. There's another script here. He had another script called destroy. It's really noddy. It just has this function called destroy text. And you might wonder, where's that called from? Nicely in Visual Studio Code, I can just go and search for that. And I can even see that it's being called from an anim asset. You can't really do that super easily in Visual Studio. So this anim asset, the text anim, which is the thing that is animating our text, if I click on the text, is calling it and it's calling it with a thing called a animation event. It's calling the destroy text function. So what it's saying is, hey, I've faded out completely. I'm ready to be destroyed. So it goes on and calls the destroy method of our destroyer, which has itself just a link to the object we want to destroy, which is just the root object. Fairly straightforward. That is how the text system works in its entirety. And because it's structured like this, we could even create an object pool. Uh, if you folks know what an object pool is, we might consider that as a performance enhancement, but not yet. Okay, so that is the damage text system, fairly in depth. Now, what I've been doing for the attribute system is taking a leaf out of the Torchlight book. So here in Torchlight, we have got quite an in-depth statistics pane, they call it the arcane statistics pane, and it gives you a great insight to how the game is calculating stuff. So let me give you an example. We've got this critical damage bonus, and that is made up to plus 60%, and that's mostly because of my, uh, because of my strength, which is giving it a plus 10 to the critical damage. Now, is that a multiplicative plus 10? or an additive plus 10. I asked myself the very same question. So you can actually go ahead and try it out. You can add some strength to the critical hit and you can see whether it goes up. So it's 10 at the moment. If I add, that's about 1%, go over to the arcane statistics, you can see it's now gone up actually by two. It's rounding. So you never quite know here whether it was gonna be 60.8, so it's rounding up. So that's how it does statistics. It has some percentage statistics which add all together. And it's got some non-percentage statistics, although I don't think it's got many of those, if any. I mean, you get a, a, a sum here of the poison damage and stuff like that, and you get a sum of all the armor. And that's all affected by your inventory, obviously. So if you have these ringed boots that have four armor, they all sum together. It's also got a plus to the physical armor. What else have we got in here? I think there should be some inventory items somewhere that give me a bonus to something else. Like adds to mana, for example, adds to the strength attribute. So that's interesting, adding to the strength attribute. We're not doing anything like that in our RPG. But the idea is you could equip certain things and it will give you bonuses to these different stats in here. Um, oh, there you go. We've got a plus seven attack speed. 
under this hasty skewer blade and a plus two to the critical hit chance. So let's have a look at that. The critical hit chance at the moment is 4%. If I swap this out, which I can't unfortunately because I'm not strong enough, this one's got a plus two critical hit. If I swap that out with a weapon, then we should see that my critical hit chance goes up to 6%. That's additive rather than multiplicative because it hasn't added 2% of 4% to it. Anyway, that's the game I'm drawing a little bit of inspiration from. And let me close down some of these files, make things a little bit simpler. And I want to just show you what the attribute system is because we saw it a little bit in action here already with take damage. You can see I'm doing attributes.totaldefense. And that's all coming from this attribute mono behavior, which is on the player. So here's the component called attributes. And it doesn't actually have much going in terms of configuration, but it has a lot going for it in terms of properties. So let me close down some of these properties so that we can get a better idea from the top level what kind of properties are being exposed here. Okay, so the properties are total damage, damage bonus, which is a percentage, the weapon damage, which is just the damage of the weapon before the damage bonus has been applied. So the total damage has the damage bonus applied. We've got a critical hit bonus, a critical chance, a hit speed, which is going to be probably removed from the attributes because you can't affect it. We've got the armor, the armor bonus, and the total defense, which takes into account the armor bonus and the armor. So those are the kinds of ideas. You can see how the calculations are being done in here. You've got the armor multiplied by one plus the armor bonus over 100. That's basically saying plus, is how you think of a plus percentage. It is the thing plus some percentage. So that is just a little bit of maths. But how are we doing things like the bonuses that we saw over in Torchlight? So the critical hit bonus, for example, is some base critical hit. So we're saying your base critical hit will be 20% better than a normal hit. And additionally, we're going to sum up all the modifiers for the critical hit bonus. What does that do? Let's have a look. So it's down here and it is going and calling this get stats modifier for attribute and gets all the modifiers for a given attribute and just sums up their values. So we'll need to look at what a modifier is in a second. But what is that doing? It's, this is a bit of a rabbit hole. It is going and looking at all the modifier providers, getting their modifiers, and then yielding them. If you haven't seen this before, it's very much like a coroutine. Uh, in fact, it is what is used in a coroutine. It's called an enumerable in C Sharp. And the idea is that it returns a list, but it does it lazily. So if you ask for the first item, it will give you the first item. It won't try and calculate any further. We'll see why this is necessary later, and I'll explain it more in the course. The idea here is just that it's returning a list of modifiers. What are the modifiers? I hear you ask, because this seems to be important. A stats modifier is here. It is literally just as we saw over in the player. The stats modifier is over in the inventory. Is this. It is the attribute and the value, basically. Attribute and value. So it tells you what attribute you want to modify, and it tells you what value you want to modify it with. Very straightforward. So if I go back to attributes, you can see that that's basically what it's doing. It's going through this list. It's saying, if this is not the attribute we want to modify, then don't return it. Otherwise, return that modifier, and then we're summing that modifier together. So what is this list of modifier providers? Well, at the moment, it is just the stats component, which can provide modifiers, and it is the player inventory. So the player inventory being this one, which has just got a list of modifiers, and then the stats component here, which gives you modifiers based on your strength and dexterity and so on and so forth. So it's quite a nifty little system that allows us to have different components affect the modifier system. And in fact, I want to expand it so that you've got a component that stores up all your temporary buffs and debuffs in there as well. So let's have a look. I've started to look into the modifier system. There is, in fact, to do this, these guys are using an interface, an iStats modifier interface, which is really just a simple noddy way of saying that it allows me to get modifiers from it. And let's have a look at how the stats are doing this. Where are my open files? Here, the stats. So it implements the iStats modifier, which means that it returns these modifiers here and these modifiers are being constructed as 
There's one modifier that affects the damage bonus, and it is the damage bonus per strength point multiplied by the strength point. So you can modify how much your strength will affect the damage bonus there, and then we go on to do it for critical bonus, chance, and armor bonus as well. So you get an armor bonus for having high constitution points and so on and so forth. Obviously that's very easy to tweak. It's very, very simple. So we're going to have a system for upgrading all your strength points, or dexterity points and so on and so forth, but that's not implemented yet. So that's the modifier system, and this is the character stats. I mean, the character stats are really noddy, pretty straightforward really. And you can just see it is at the moment just an integer, and it is affecting the modifiers. So this is used in the health system for the armor, but it is also used, if we have a look at the weapon system, it is also used in the weapon system to get our damage. So we get, so if we don't have any attributes, we would fall back to something else. But if we do have these attributes, we actually get the total damage from the attributes. Notice this says choose randomly because what's returned here is a damage range object. Now this looks quite complicated, but the damage range object is basically just a minimum and maximum damage that you can do. And the important thing is this choose randomly, which returns the actual damage. And this just does a random range. So it just chooses between the minimum and maximum at random. So that there's a bit of variability. This means that in the weapon config, I've actually swapped out the previous float damage that we could have had with this damage range. And by default, it will go, well, by default it has this, but the point is by what, well, depends on the, the weapon you're gonna have, what the damage range is gonna be. Some will have high variability, some will have much lower variability in terms of the damage they can apply. And that's entirely configurable. And then that goes through the attribute system. So the attribute system actually gets the weapon damage in here. Not sure about this yet. Might re reconsider this. But it gets the weapon system's damage range. And you see it returns a damage range rather than a float. And then in total damage, we just multiply and add to this. Now actually, in order to multiply it with a damage range, that's why there's so much code here. We're just overloading a whole bunch of operators and allowing for implicit conversions and so on and so forth, which means that we can get a damage range multiplied by a float. And it, all it does is it multiplies the minimum value and the maximum value. So that is pretty much a full overview of what I've been doing in the last week. That's been quite intense. I actually got quite a lot done. So I'm uh, looking back on it. I didn't feel like it at the time, but looking back on it is quite handy. And it's something I recommend when you're doing your own projects is do keep a, a weekly log. I have, a, have version controls really good at this. If I go into my version control and have a look at the uh, prototype branch, you can see this is my last weekly update. And these are all the commits that I've done since then. And you can see all the things that I have actually achieved since my last weekly update just, just a week ago. So that is quite a handy way of keeping track and saying, what did I actually do last week? So in summary, what I did do last week, we said is that I had this damage text system. So I can run up to stuff and I can thwack it and it gives you the text. And I also have these modifiers that allow us to, for example, increase my strength and give absolutely huge <laughs> damage as a result because of the damage bonus that I get because of the strength. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It is absolutely uh, great for us to have thumbs up on the videos. Do subscribe if you want to be the first to find out about this. That goes out to the list only occasionally. So if you got this from the being on the RPG course, then you might not always get the YouTube videos. So do subscribe to get that. Obviously give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it. That's negative feedback is uh, helpful as well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next weekly update because so hopefully soon there won't be very many new weekly updates and there will actually be a part two course for you to take. Now, many of you are always asking, when is that part two course going to be? Well, hopefully it's gonna be very early in the next year. So do keep your eyes peeled for any promotions that go out to the mailing list on Udemy. You may want to make sure that you are checked in for those promotions to get to hear about it first. Look forward to seeing you next week.